How's it going, guys? And welcome back to Retrospect, your go-to retro gaming podcast. You're listening to episode 42. Today, we'll be talking about the PlayStation showcase that just happened this past week. And more specifically, Project Q. Joining me on the mics as always, we have Mr. I Love New York, Brandon yeah. Saltalamacchia. What's up, oh, dude? Oh, man. So for those that don't, didn't follow our socials, I've been in New York for a few days. And I'm going to give you guys some details which nobody else knows about. A lot of people will know that I, I, I met Casey Neistat. We're doing a collaboration with him. But what I haven't told anyone is why we met him. And quite simply, he is interested in finding a handheld under $200 that can emulate up to PlayStation 1 in a nice form factor with Android OS. So I went over with a literal briefcase filled with handhelds all the way from the UK, and that was our collaboration. We got up maybe two videos out of it, um, so you'll see those over the coming... I'm going to say in June sometimes because we really want to master the editing on this, but yeah, a collaboration with Casey Neistat, that... I I still think it's a dream. That is awesome. Uh, yeah, how did you how did you feel about going through security? How did that look with your briefcase of uh, of handhelds? Didn't look good, but I tried putting like some childish like retro dodo stickers on it just to be like you know this isn't what you think it is. It's just a lot of toys, but I just they didn't even stuff. check it. Nobody even opened it, dude. I'm not even lying. Ah, they well, I mean, they could see it in the X rays. They were just like. Right. This dude's just got a bunch of Game Boys in here. What a freaking what dork. A nerd. <laughs> <laughs> How was that flight, too? How was that flight uh, over? Eight hours, but I treated myself and Rob to, like, premium economy. So you're nice. not, like, crammed in like a sardine. I think you got, like, four inches extra. And every little helps, right? So it we does, got in premium man. economy, you know, and uh, it was a breeze. Eight hours, seven hours there, seven hours back. Oh. What was your uh, in-flight entertainment option or choice? Uh, I was actually reading for most of it going over there. You um, wow. I, a learned man. Yeah. Um, I did have the handheld, so I was playing. I think I pulled out the... I wanted to pull out maybe the A and Odin, and Rob was uh, playing with the RG355V, the vertical one. So nice. we had plenty of entertainment. But on the way back, I slept for most of it because it was an, an overnight <laughs> flight. So, yeah. And you just got back yesterday? Yesterday, yeah. Yesterday, oh. and I had to go see my family today. It's been a bit hectic. I haven't sat down until now. So you're still cycling through the, the, the jet lag. Yeah, yeah. I, th I'm, I think. So I slept for 14 hours today. So I'm hoping oh, nice. that's kind of just like kicked it out of my system. But I only got four hours of sleep on the plane. So we'll see. I, th I should be okay. Some good catch-up sleep, man. Mm. <sighs> I... Uh, I love I love the idea of traveling. Like it always excites me. But then, I think the older I get, the the less I like it, and the more that I've traveled, the less I like it. I don't know I if that's think, the same. I thing honestly either. think investing just a little bit more in that premium economy, like the slightly bigger seats, changes everything. It's when mm -hmm. you're crammed in with like people you don't know. And I'm a big guy. I'm like a thick guy. So when like even in premium economy, when I'm Those like trying to eat dude i'm like hitting rob in the head like yeah oh my god and i was so tired dude like rob will uh, rob will uh, probably mention this that we had like this food and it was like a pick and mix it was like a it was, i think they call it like the english picnic in the air and ah. i was eating and i was like oh what is this brown and orange thing this looks like a chocolate dessert so i threw it back and i was so tired and sleepy that i swallowed it and i was like that wasn't right it was fucking cheese in the wax dude so i ate all this wax and my t my tummy started getting real bad and i'm like oh no oh, so as no. soon as we got to the hotel man i had the squits and it was the day it was hours before meeting casey neistat so i got in my own head and i started having the squits the morning before seeing casey neistat and oh man i was i was so scared that i was going to shit myself in his office <laughs> and i had to like three hours film it, filming and i had to get out of there quick i have i have you said the squits the squirts, yeah. I have yeah. not heard that before. I mean, like we would just call it the squirts shits. here. Yeah, the yeah, squirts yeah. here. <laughs> squirts. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, make you want to quit when you have the it was, squirts. It's oh, just dude. typical, man. I, like, I ate it, and my, my belly was like, nah, -uh, we need to get Party rid of that. Die. And I just knew. I just spiraled into, like, anxiety because yes. I knew I was going to just crap my yes. pants at like Casey's. Dude, 
Yeah, I think the comp. It's probably more or less the latter. Uh, just the, yeah. the nerves of of sitting there and seeing someone who's so huge and excited about that more than it was mm. the wax. You know, <laughs> yeah, people eating wax. Right. People eating eating all kinds of wax, and they're fine. Yeah, yeah. people eat corn dogs too. They're pretty <laughs> similar. <laughs> Don't you dare slander the name of the corn dog, Brandon. <laughs> son of a Swiss bitch. dog. <laughs> All right. Well, that's awesome, man. I am looking forward to that. Um, and if you guys are tuning in, sorry, we, you know, this was a, a New York podcast. We wanted to catch up really quick. Uh, but mm-hmm. let's jump into the, uh, the, the quick housekeeping. So um, quick little idea here, Brandon, we can, we can brainstorm this later, but we're getting close to 500 YouTube subs and episode 50. So we could like coordinate something fun. I don't know what yeah, we could like plan that. there but something exciting about that you know we could do a little giveaway maybe someone could get a get a, a handheld giveaway. yeah i've got plenty of handhelds i could almost like give them a choice seeing what they're after yeah um, i have my let's... newly customized rg 35x uh with a, a new slick theme on there i could oh, put that up for smooth. uh for giveaways somebody smooth. somebody wants that so we'll see uh but yeah be thinking about that if you guys have anything fun you'd like us to do for the 50th let us know we'd love to hear and uh, yeah, you can do that by writing into retrospect at retrododo.com. But let's jump on over to the topic of the show. So while you were in New York, I think you were in New York when the mm-hmm. actual showcase happened, right? Yeah. Yeah. PlayStation had a showcase and um, it was, uh, you know, it was mixed. It was mixed, I could say. Uh, based on just the social reaction, I saw a lot of people who are not super pumped. Did you get a chance to actually watch it or did you kind of just catch all the no- the news afterwards? I was catching it up, you know, seeing the uh, feedback on Twitter wasn't too good. So I knew that like I didn't need to dive into it instantly. Yeah. But obviously, the Project Q was one of the bigger announcements, which we'll get onto in a, in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there wasn't like outside of that and the Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater remake kind of like a, a good <laughs> retro throwback mm. uh everyone was super hype about that we got no gameplay just a just a quick showcase saying hey this is happening they played some of the og music from the game people were super pumped about that and then on top of this there was not it didn't happen in the showcase but there was a a metal gear solid master collection volume one set that was also confirmed like after the showcase for a release in autumn of 2023 so that's a really quick release as well isn't it yeah I mean, so they must have been working on it for a long time. It, won't, it must also like pretty much be ready, right? And I don't know if it's much of like they're not doing like a full remake. I think it's just like they're up resing and doing some stuff to past titles that they're just bringing in a, in a collection. Because mm-hmm. I, like I'm sure many other people, have not played a ton of Metal Gear. It's not like one of my games that I've I'm super familiar with. I played Metal Gear Solid Five, and that was it. Oh, have right. you played any of those? Mm-hmm. I played the original, but yeah, the, to, to, the others I've kind of like maybe put a couple hours into. Yeah. So they're huge for a lot of people. But for, for me in particular, I'm just like, that's awesome. It looks cool. I don't know if I'll play it. But in terms of retro throwbacks, I'm sure a lot of people were psyched about that. So that was cool. But yeah, the rest of the showcase, I think people were kind of down on. They were just like, there wasn't really any big, big news that came out of it. We got some really cool looks at indie games. So, you know, we got like... Let's see here. We got Sword of the Sea, which looks really, really interesting. It's the same folks that made Journey and a couple other games right. like Flower, right. stuff like that. Um, Teardown, Cat Quest, Pirates of the Caribbean. I mean, come I like on, that name. Yeah, come great, on, man. What a name. What a what a what a fun title. Parr. The, the t- <laughs> Ghost Runner Two. I know a lot of people are excited about that as well. The Plucky Squire looks awesome. I'm really excited about that one. It's like the 2D art style where you like they jump into like walls and then back out sort of like a link between worlds on 3ds uh right. but it's just a little more cartoony and animated and it looks it looks freaking sick so very excited about that but in terms of playstation stuff we got we got spider-man 2 gameplay looks really looks, looks, looks really cool you play as miles and peter parker and that so that'll be a ton cool, of fun yeah. hell divers 2 we got alan wake 2 uh trailer that's launching october 17th um some assassin's creed mirage gameplay uh let's see what else final F- final fantasy 16 launch trailer all that jazz foam stars did you see this no i didn't see foam stars so it's like a splatoon kind of knockoff i think developed by square enix um but instead of ink it's foam 
just just film. How the, I guess Splatoon is incredibly popular, but this one, yes. see, it's got really nice animation. I guess they're kind of targeting the same demographic, maybe a slightly older. I don't know. We'll I think see. it's more of that like free to play kind of crowd. Like this looks like a free to play game. I'm pretty sure it is. It's a party shooter, PS5, PS4, where basically you're just trying to control an arena and kill people with foam. So, yeah, it's just it's just Splatoon, just a different different license, not Nintendo's. Mm. So, it looks it looks okay. It looks okay. Time will tell. <laughs> yes, time will certainly tell. But those were like really the big the big announcements we had some psvr2 stuff but it i think this was the main reason it was kind of light across the board there just weren't a lot of huge hitters that people mm-hmm. were excited about outside of metal gear solid uh so it's because they're more of... like teasers aren't they the, the, the big named ones you know mm-hmm. admittedly the spider-man 2 gameplay they had a lot of that showing but like you know the the big ones like assassin's creed and stuff it was more like teasers even the metal gear solid one was a kind of a teaser wasn't it it was just yep. a, like a uh, was it an ant eating a frog eating a bird <laughs> eating a snake eating a yes. crocodile like, what the hell <laughs> lots and lots of nature exactly <laughs> <laughs> what the hell even is this <laughs> uh so i think I, heard, I read something i don't know how you feel about this i want to hear your immediate thoughts but some people were saying that sony was holding back for of of future release partly due to the activision blizzard merger that still is kind of being finalized so like they might have some huge titles they're holding on to and i think there's probably some more stuff they're going to be announcing in june in tandem with like the e3 summer games fest and stuff like that so i don't know what are your thoughts do you think they're holding back on that or you think it's just this is all playstation has right now yeah i would probably say they're holding back a little bit you know just just to give people some time to wait to see what Microsoft and everyone else is doing because that is a big merger, like a very big merger that they can't ignore. Um, mm-hmm. So I think they want to see kind of what what's up their sleeve. But saying that, they kind of came out with the Project Q, which yep. seems just not out of nowhere, but I think the premise of the device kind of makes people a little bit confused as to who it's targeted, targeted at, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, real quick, the specs on the Project Q, it's basically, it's it's like the Wii U. I saw a lot of folks comparing that as well <laughs> yeah, on yeah. Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> it has to be streaming from a PS5. So, it's using like remote play like you could right now with your phone or your Vita back in the day. It's an 8-inch LCD display with 1080p 60fps. Um, that was confirmed after the fact as well uh, by Jeff Keighley, which I thought was weird. So, mm. like, they didn't give you the specs that much in the showcase, but then Jeff... So, what, he just tweeted it? He tweeted it after the fact. I think when they got hands-on, he's like, this is what it is. And I was like, why didn't they just mention that in the showcase? I've, I've also heard there's only three to four hours battery life on that it. That sounds so right. That, that was according to Insider Gaming. So, you know, yeah. I so, honestly don't know what to think. Yeah, like, what? what's your, like, immediate take? Like, does this even make sense right now? It, it's... Uh, I'm trying to think about like who it targets. It targets a somewhat a household with one single PlayStation 5 where they want to use it in handheld mode when they're not using the console. But when in reality is that a thing? You know, maybe your girlfriend wants to watch TV because I use my PlayStation as a home entertainment system. So it everything oh, okay. it kind of runs through that Netflix, YouTube, whatever. So right. we can only really I can only play when my girlfriend isn't watching TV and vice versa. So this could you know target me if i wanted to play on the sofa while she's watching tv but then again i have a lot of physical discs so can this do like multiple things do i have to have the disc in the playstation 5 for it to then Mm -hmm. run on Mm -hmm. remote play that kind of feels a little bit contradicting in a way like i actually have to like load up my playstation to then go onto my handheld like really you just want to pick up and play Um, right and it needs to be priced very competitively, and I don't think Sony's going to do that. It has, for me, personally, I don't know what your your thoughts are on what this has to be priced at. It needs to be around $250 or less for this to be a mass appeal. Yeah. But I don't think it's going to be that. I agree. I, I, I put in here in the notes, I'm like, I'm asking, it, it's going to cost at least 300 But yeah, 250 would be the sweet spot, because mm-hmm. if you think about what it's going to then cost to essentially get this only, like, dedicated streaming device it's going to be like 800 plus dollars if not more because you have to have a ps5 and you have to have this thing so it's like well at that point why not just buy a freaking steam deck or something else that can Mm -hmm. 
run everything like as it is on that device no matter where you are and i'm just like yeah this is not a good selling prop um have you messed around at all with remote play like have you used remote play on your phone or however yeah, not so much on my phone like i've got a couple of like cloud-based handhelds like the logitech yeah. g cloud and i'll admit that the gameplay you know is pretty good everything works you know seemingly well but you do have to have a good you know internet connection so i do think it will run well but one thing that they've already released and maybe it was only released like a year ago was the the backbone adapter you know the controller yep. for your iphone and android and that's 99 pounds that's incredibly yep. cheap so i think people are going to be kind of comparing it to that and being like why would i spend 400 dollars on this you know bigger screen admittedly probably slightly more comfortable but i can get all that for 99 dollars in a smaller form factor and more yeah. portable yeah this thing <laughs> Yeah, that, that's that's what I'm like. I'm so confused. Like you're bringing up all the right questions. Like the backbone is essentially the same exact thing without the dual sense functionality. That's one thing mm. that they're trying to like sort of shoe in as like a big benefit is having the dual sense haptics and the uh, trigger feedback. But it's like that's not. I, I turn that off on half of the games that I play because I just don't need the triggers. Like the haptics are fine, but I mean, uh, I just. I don't know. I mean, they have to go all in on cloud streaming to like make this experience so much better on this handheld that like there is no other option because in my experience playing on the backbone, I have one on my phone. It It's cool and it works. I think totally fine. If you're playing anything that's like slower turn based, you know, not that fast or Twitch based movement needed because any, anytime you step outside of that, I mean, there's there's mm -hmm. just so much lag. There's just too much lag to even really enjoy the game at that point. Right. So, I don't know. Weird, right? Like, just just a weird decision. I'm 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 interested, but I just have no idea what this is going to do. It's like this product has come out and they've they've they think they've been taking cloud gaming seriously for the last five years when in reality they haven't but to launch <laughs> something like this you feel like like that you haven't been taking it seriously so what's kind of making you take it seriously now so seriously that you've invested millions of dollars into a handheld which i don't think is going to sell very well you know no. it's not portable it's pretty big you know it's probably going to be the same size <laughs> as a playstation big. 5 man like <laughs> you know it, it's just they they it, and this comes on to your la your 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 question of like what could their future plans be if they're like really wanting to take cloud gaming seriously and i just don't no, I just don't think it has mass appeal yet, and that's what I think they're gonna they're gonna realize when they launch this, and they've probably sold like tens of thousands of units when they really want hundreds of thousands. Yeah, like I think part of my my thought process was like if they somehow make this device to where it can function without being tethered to a PS5, then there's actually a pretty solid value prop where it's like, oh, this is. This is a, a handheld device that can play my PlayStation 5 games. I can download them to this thing, and maybe it has to be on Wi-Fi once just to check that, like, yes, you are the account owner on this PS5, and you can therefore play these games that you've... Sort of like how you would on, like, Netflix, you know? Like, you can download mm -hmm. Netflix titles to your phone, and then mm -hmm. you can play them offline um, as long as you've, like, been connected recently, and they can verify that it's, that it's you, that you own that account. Um, like that would, that would make sense to me, but I don't, I just, everything they've announced so far, it doesn't seem like that's their approach. No, they made it pretty clear that it's Wi-Fi. Like <laughs> you need Wi-Fi to play yep. this. So it, it, even if you could download your games, the amount of storage that this thing needs is going to have to have, if you want to download, you can probably get like two games on it and you're, you're screwed. Like, and just, you're done. Maybe not even that, you know, cause what, like ps5 games these days are like hundreds of gigabytes yeah dude. you know so getting like a couple of those on if you want like to take horizon zero dawn and stuff with you it's just it's it's a very ain't, awkward product ain't gonna happen the only pro so far that i see in this is that sony is trying to do a bit more like diversification with their products like that's great you know I like that you're trying to do this, but part of me wishes that they would have just announced the Vita 2 or like a dedicated handheld. Um, why Why do you think they, they moved away from that? Like my first thought was like, maybe they just didn't want to develop for two systems again. Like they like that they have the PS5 and that's it. But I don't know. It seems like a Vita 2 would have been a good move. 
I think it comes down to focus um, where they want to put their money and also competing with Nintendo at this mm-hmm. moment in time is probably the worst time to do it. <laughs> um, they're just they're just so powerful and you know I I don't know. I think you I think if they made it kind of like it could play other games and it could have its own cartridges that would have been a good shot but it would have t- taken years and years and years for for people to trust and and for it to have strong mm. games and, and exclusive lineups and stuff. So I don't know. I think people are just going to want to buy it to hack it. Um <laughs> and, and, and yeah, we'll see how that all goes, but yeah. It's just like, can you? Can, I don't even know if if someone was playing on your PlayStation Five and you wanted to play on your handheld, you can't play two games at the same time, can Mm-mm. you? So you kind of like, even if you like, if you were a parent and your kid, you know, you can only afford like one PlayStation Five, and they've both got it, and they want to play on it separately. You can't even do that. Nope. You're stuck. It's a single use hand handheld. <laughs> When you put it like that, it's just so depressing. You literally have to have a PS5 running the the game at the exact same time that you're trying to play it on the handheld, so that way it can stream to it. I don't know. Weird. I want I want to be excited for this because I just love handhelds in general. But like you know, this is not the handheld we all wanted. I don't think it's the one like PS5 uh, players deserve. And it's just not pushing any kind of tech f- like forward. You know, mm-hmm. streaming's been around for ages. You could buy the Logitech G Cloud for two hundred and fifty bucks, maybe even two hundred bucks nowadays. That can basically do the same thing. Mm-hmm. So it's it's already like facing competition, and they they shot themselves in the foot with the backbone as well. And ninety nine dollars, and that can do everything as well. So I, I I'm know. confused. I think that's the general consensus of the internet as well. Everyone's just a little bit, they're asking the question like, why? Like, what, what is, yeah. what is this? Uh, I, do you think they're releasing it at out. the end of the year? Is that, yeah. do you think they teased it now? And they're I think so. Like, no, I think it's, it's yeah. Coming later this year, like should, should launch. And I'm sure after this feedback, maybe they'll push it back or they'll do something to figure out how to make it more viable in the market. But yeah, I mean, they said later this year, so... Damn. I guess yeah. all we can do is kind of wait and see what news they have to offer. You know, they've got, like, the retro games and stuff on their PS Plus, like, the mm-hmm. expensive end. So, you know, you can get some kind of retro games out of it, but it's not the best selection, and it's the yeah. most expensive. I can't remember what it is. Maybe it's, like, $10, $15 a month. Yeah, it depends what tier you're at, but yeah, fifteen dollars a month I think is about what the extra tier uh, is, and I have that right now. It's great, right. I love it. But if you want the retro stuff, premium I think is a little bit more. I think it's like closer to eighteen to twenty bucks uh, Damn. for that. Um, but you know, mm. I mean, if you're a serious, if you're a serious gamer, you know, if you're a serious gamer that has all Sony handhelds and actually earbuds too, I forgot about this. The oh, yeah. PlayStation earbuds got announced, so they're just. Regular wireless earbuds. They have a nice little slick charging case. It looks just like the PS5. You slide it out, put those bad boys in, and you apparently have lossless audio, which is kind of cool. So that's cool. If there's one thing Sony can do well, it is like sound. You know, like their their headphones are excellent that they so they sell. Yeah. Um, I'm using so. their um, their new uh, what they called like the WFs, the WHs. They came yeah. out like six months ago beautiful headphones crispy yep. audio like you said they know how to make uh headphones so hopefully they're pretty nice too that'll work and i might consider those uh if i were to get a headset like oh yeah wireless earbuds that mm. those those seem less cumbersome and you know if they work they work so but uh yeah weird weird time man and i think just on the tail end of the Switch's life cycle where, you know, we know we have the successor to the Switch coming out probably next year. I just have a feeling that Project Q is going to is going to bite the dust pretty early. Um Yeah. Yeah, well, I will I will get one. So anyone that wants uh, like a review, I will take this hit for all of you. I raise my hand. I will try yeah. it out. I mean like I volunteer as tribute. <laughs> I could see it. I could see it being nice like the convenience of being able to play a ps5 handheld on the couch sounds great uh and i do think like the trigger like the, it being like a legit full dual sense controller attached to that screen like it's going to be the most comfortable handheld probably that's come out in yeah. a while i mean like yeah. steam deck i've heard is very comfortable but like 
by and large, the switch is very uncomfortable to hold because uh, it's just so flat. So that, you know, that's one thing it has going for it, I guess. It might be comfortable to hold as long as you can they rest it. They didn't look removable, did they? No. I think those uh, things are straight up on there. Just Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're right. I think it'd be very comfortable. I think it'd be a pleasurable gaming experience for those that are willing to pay the price. Mm -hmm. But then you just made me think about this. What if one of those controllers breaks or like you have an issue? You have to send your whole device in. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. The joystick's yeah. not working. All right, send your whole thing in. Okay. Got a sticky D pad. Yeah. All right, I hope it comes back fixed. Screen's broken yeah, when it comes what back. The hell? Dang it. Because that's the magic with the Switch. You just take off the Joy-Con, send the Joy-Con, you're cool. Mm -hmm. But damn, that whole thing. I don't think those those are detachable. Maybe I'm and wrong. Eight inches, eight inches of screen as well. That's a that's a <laughs> lot of space to crack. <laughs> yeah. They better have that super glass on there like they do for the yeah. phones. Gorilla Ooh. glass. Yeah. All right. Well, there you have it, guys. We're talking about handhelds sort of doing some retro throwbacks here talk, talking about playstation trying to do it again and uh i'd love to know everyone's <laughs> thoughts on the uh, the old project q i hope I, what do you what do you think they're going to name this thing because they're not going to call it project q uh yeah i don't know i was going to ask you the same question like, it can't be <laughs> ps5p because it's not actually portable ps5p <laughs> <laughs> like it ha like, it's not even portable do you know what I mean they can't even get away with it being like you know port something portable uh, it's, it's, place it's got to be the Playstation 5 something and it's going to be something quirky like Edge Cobra yeah. or something you know Edge I mean they might try to pull in something along the lines of like the streaming element you know like yeah PS5 clap no PS5 stream PS5 I don't know PS5 buddy. P PS <laughs> PS5 best friend. PS5 you. Oh, please stop. <laughs> please stop. Oh, God. With a letter U or just Y-O-U? Letter U. Yeah, okay. Nintendo just straight, style. Straight up copying Nintendo at this point. Yeah. We, PS5, we, you are here. You are playing. <laughs> we. PS5, we have ripped you off. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Also, anyone listening, please tune in and l let us know or write it right into us to let us know what you think they're going to call Project Q because I'd love to get some some uh, guest suggestions out there. Be kind of I fun. might do a poll on that. I might do a poll on that today because it'd be Let's interesting it. to see because sometimes there's just straight terrible ideas, but then someone would probably come up with it bang on. You get some good ones. I'm still hoping out for this Super Switch. Whatever the actual next sequel to the switches that is called the super switch like super nintendo nintendo just kind of bring it back to the roots be that so would good. be cool that It'd would be, so be cool good. like make it the pur original like purple and gray colors mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that'd be so nice all right y'all well, let's jump into our last topic of the show so uh brandon i don't know you you did some traveling you, cool. you did you did a lot of things while you were in the airplane so uh, did you play anything what, what, what are you playing i didn't but i can take this time to tell you about the New York um, game stops, game stores. Oh, sorry, game just stores. Game. so overpriced. Oh like, no! Guess how much retro stuff I bought while I was in New York. And our, our our like main reason we went is to meet Casey and go like retro gaming hunting. I feel like I, you bought nothing. I, I feel bought, like you bought nothing. <laughs> what I did buy here, because the only oh. thing I bought, so those those watching from the Nintendo store. I got a I got a Nintendo Store mints. Oh right? wow! Some For those mints. watching, I will explain. They're like little D pads. You can't really see that. Look how cute that is. That is pretty adorable. So I didn't buy any like retro gaming related stuff. I bought an overpriced Toy Story Tamagotchi. <laughs> uh, I thought it was like two dollars ninety nine. Turns out it was twenty nine dollars, and I didn't uh. have the the audacity to correct them. And then you guys won't enjoy you this. You thought it was two ninety nine, you fool. Yeah, I got suckered in with that one. And I bought <laughs> some um, Japanese Pokemon cards. I went Heck to a yeah. shop called Toy Tokyo. Okay. And bought some of them. And some other ones there. So not playing much because I've been traveling, but um, looks like New York um, game stores have been playing me with the prices. <laughs> Dang, dude. What, what, about a, what you? a turn of events. What a turn of events. You flew over there to check out all the cool retro stuff and bought some mints bought some mints and some pokemon parts <laughs> i bought kate my partner and my nieces more than i bought myself it's depressing Aww, there you go 
Well, you know, you saved the day still. Yeah. Fun, fun uncle. There you mm-hmm. go. Buying, buying fun things from New York. Uh, so still tons of Zelda. Um, good, I don't good, know good. if you saw about this duplication get glitch. Did you hear about yeah. this? Yeah, I saw that. They, they already patched it out. So I haven't, I haven't updated my Zelda save yet. I've literally just left my switch on the entire time. So it can't restart. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> and yeah, I may or may not have duplicated lots and lots of diamonds and other materials that you might need later in the game uh, to like i might do that as well i haven't updated it doesn't automatically update does it It comes up with a little it does auto update oh, if you have it off shit but you can like revert your save uh, i believe so like someone was talking about like if you just push your date back or do something it like i don't mm. know something with like the actual firmware or version that's installed will change right uh but yeah yeah, so I have my I fully maxed out my little my little battery pack, little Link's nice. little battery pack. So I've got, yep. I got all the Zone I charges now, so I can fly forever. Um, awesome. And I have like fifty thousand rupees. So you're minted, um, man. You should uh, take you should take Link to the New York game stores. <laughs> yeah, Woo. he probably still couldn't afford stuff. <laughs> no, I saw I saw. So to give you some like perspective, I saw like an old uh, game and watch. It was like crusty and broken. Two hundred dollars. I saw a Pokemon Mini console that was like sun damaged. Also two hundred dollars. I, I just ugh. and Pokemon. I saw a Pokemon Emerald for two hundred dollars. Cartridge. Oh, yikes, Yikes, and dude. I saw a Pokemon Red Japanese for thirty dollars. That's when you know things things ain't right. Well, and Nintendo wonders why people want to emulate stuff now. You know, they see that crap and they're like, "I'm not, I can't afford this." Yeah, well, I might as well buy a handheld from AliExpress that does all of this. <laughs> exactly, AliExpress, uh, AliExpress, or uh, what's the other one? Retro, keep retro. Yeah, keep, keep retro. retro. Yeah, they're pretty cool. They're pretty good too. Dang. Uh, what did Bob say? Did uh, did he agree with that? All the stuff was overpriced. Yeah, yeah. We, I was so we got some footage. We were with him, and we went through the stores, and he he was looking as well. Like, oh my god, that console, that that cartridge is four hundred dollars. <laughs> he the only thing he bought was um, uh, Nintendo printer paper for like oh. fifteen dollars, and then I got my receipt, and I think I had more paper on my receipt than he did his actual <laughs> po- printer. Oh man. That's for the original Game Boy, right? Or uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You basically could take pictures and then print it out. Essentially, you needed the Game Boy cartridge camera. Yeah, the camera as well, which I'm sure also is exorbitantly expensive. Jeez, yeah. Man. Oh, actually, I did buy. I did buy something. I lied. It's the uh, lied. the the e reader for the Game Boy Advance. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's fifty awesome. dollars. Yeah, that sounds about right. So you know. I, f- I found something. One thing, but, I guess. You know, with the e-readers, I'm pretty sure you can actually like buy the cards like secondhand. Uh, people can like make remake those cards, sort of like the same thing oh. with like the NFC chips they make on Switch. I think right. you can find the e-reader stuff sort right. of on the black market. You know, for yeah. way cheaper than. I don't know too much about it. That's why I kind of bought it. I want to. I want to kind of dive into some research. Maybe do a video or something. Because I know you can get like, cool. like rare Pokemon cards that you can scan and stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a go. That'll be fun. That'll be a fun video. All right, guys, yeah. we're testing out the e-reader today. Let's see if this thing works. And like the e-reader <laughs> just doesn't work at all. No, You're like, no. damn it. <laughs> I better keep my receipt and go back and get my refund. <laughs> yeah. Just send him like a video call. Like, hey, I bought this. It doesn't work. Yeah, you, yeah. I'm just gonna send it back to you, please yeah please please save me money well that's awesome man well everyone that is the end of our podcast today um let us know what you thought on the playstation showcase and more specifically project q let us know by writing into retrospect retro dodo.com or commenting on your preferred listening channel brandon anything you want to plug last or let folks know where they can find you on the interwebs just stay tuned for our YouTube channel, you know, you're going to see Casey open up some handhelds, talk about retro video games, and maybe even a vlog with us and Bob Wolf buying absolutely nothing in New York. I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see it. I'm here for it. Cool. I got nothing to plug, but yep. Check us out on Twitter, B-I-T-B-L-O-G-G-I-S-T, and retro underscore dodo everywhere. Until then, y'all, catch you in the next episode. Adios.
I didn't try a water dog after your recommendation. Oh. I just looked at them and I'm like, like the 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 whole like corner shop. I don't know what you call them, like the corn dog store. Like you, you yeah. just if you look at the store closely, like the store is actually leaking grease. Just yep. like yeah, out of the corners, and I'm like, I'm I don't want the shits. I'm not eating it, that. It wasn't leaking grease. It probably was just like AC trying to keep that those hot dogs going. Yeah, that's, you know, that's yellow AC. <laughs> that's so nasty. 